In addition to praying the rosary on the five first Saturdays of the month and making the communion of reparation, Our Lady has asked us to keep her company for 15 minutes, meditating upon one of the mysteries contained in her Holy Rosary. Today we join her in contemplating the finding of the Boy Jesus in the Temple. Our Lord Jesus Christ, true God and true man, has humbled himself so as to go on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. It is the duty of mortals to pay worship to God and to go on pilgrimages, but our Lord Jesus Christ blends in with the crowd and goes on this pilgrimage for the Passover. After the days of the feast were accomplished, Scripture tells us, the boy Jesus was left behind in Jerusalem, his parents going on ahead, not realizing that he had remained behind. Many will wonder, how is it possible that his parents could leave him behind? Were they ignorant of him? Were they in some way neglecting their parental duties? Far from it, the mystery of God's work is at hand. Saint Bede the Venerable tells us, Someone will ask, how was it that the Son of God, brought up by his parents with such care, could be left behind from forgetfulness? To which it is answered, that the custom of the children of Israel, while assembling at Jerusalem on the feast days, or returning to their homes, was for the women and men to go separately and the infants or children to go with either parent indiscriminately. And so both Mary and Joseph each thought in turn that the child Jesus, whom they saw not with them, was returning with the other parent. And so we see that the parents were not negligent, but rather Almighty God was working. Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich tells us that our Lord Jesus Christ had passed many of his days of that pilgrimage with the other young people from Nazareth. He had participated very devoutly in the feast day. Indeed, our Lord was known to many people in Jerusalem. Our blessed saint relates, in the first visit, Jesus had already excited attention in Jerusalem among the friends with whom he and his parents stayed. Also among the priests and doctors, they spoke of the pious, intelligent child, of Joseph's extraordinary son. Just as among us one might at the annual pilgrimage notice in particular this or that modest holy looking person, this or that clever peasant child, and recognize him again the next year. So Jesus had already some acquaintances in the city when, in his twelfth year, with their friends and their sons, he accompanied his parents to Jerusalem. His parents were accustomed to walk with the people from their own part of the country, and they knew that Jesus, who now made the journey for the fifth time, always went with the other youths from Nazareth. And so on that day of departure, our Lord by his own design chooses to stay behind in Jerusalem. Saint Bridget of Sweden relates that during those days, our Lord lived like a beggar. He lived on the streets, asking alms from those who were still in Jerusalem. What detachment, what great love of poverty that we see in our Divine Lord, even from his earliest days, true God and true man. He seems to take a delight in having the lowest of positions, in being overlooked by men, in blending in with the lowest of the low, in being a poor beggar in Jerusalem. Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich further relates that our Lord attended various schools during those days. He participated in lectures that were intended for those who were training to be priests of the Jewish religion or Levites. There were a number of such schools in Jerusalem 
and our Lord attended three of them, asking questions in much the same way that it is depicted in St. Luke's Holy Gospel when his parents find him. Blessed Anne adds that Jesus, by his questions and answers, so astonished and embarrassed the doctors and rabbis of all these schools that they resolved on the afternoon of the third day in the public lecture hall of the temple and in the presence of the rabbis most deeply versed in the various sciences to humble the boy Jesus. The scribes and doctors had concerted the plan together for although our Lord had pleased them at first, in the end they had become vexed at him. Thus is how the divine words of our Lord are still treated. Wisdom uncreated, and yet how it offends the ignorant, the arrogant, those who prefer the wisdom of this world, those who prefer not to be humbled by the teaching of the church, those who would prefer not to have to change their lives. Even when our Lord was just a boy, the so-called doctors, the so-called scribes, they felt angry at being challenged by the wisdom of this divine young man. We see our Lord then on the third day that he remains behind, sitting in a large chair in the middle of a lecture hall. This boy, barely 12 years old, sitting in the center of the lecture hall with rabbis, with scholars on either side, they think this is their moment to humble this boy from the rural town of Nazareth. But our Lord shows his wisdom. He shows his wisdom in every subject that they propose. And our Lord does the same in our lives. Share with our Lord the problems that you have, the questions that you have in every affair of life. He is the expert in astronomy. He is the expert in architecture. He is the expert in medical science. He is the expert in scripture. He is the expert of every branch of human knowledge. If you are a student, go to our Lord frequently with your questions. If you are a teacher, be humble. Go to our Lord with your questions. Jesus, the eternal wisdom of the Father, will assist you in your tasks. For those who were pure of heart, those true Jews of old, this moment was a graced moment. We are told by St. Bridget of Sweden that our Lord was so fair of face that no one, not even someone very sad at heart, could see him face to face without being cheered at his sight. The righteous were cheered with spiritual comfort even the wicked found a relief from their sorrow of the world for as long as they looked on him. For that reason, people who were sad used to say, let us go and see Mary's son and at least find some relief as long as we are there. We are told by Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich that some of the scholars treasured our Lord's words as purest gold, but they were silent, they were humble they delighted in being with our Lord. Now we turn to our Lord's parents. Origen asks, but why did they seek him in sorrow? Was it that they thought he might have perished or been lost? It could not be, for what should cause them to dread the loss of him whom they knew to be the Lord? No, they sought Jesus lest perhaps leaving them behind, he might have returned to heaven, to descend at another place at another time. Other saints teach us that this was Our Lady's moment of test, her moment of trial. Our Lady could never lose our Lord spiritually, nor could she lose him by sin, but here, our Lady lost him physically. Here she could not find him. He was no longer there. She searched, she could not find him. This is the experience of the mystic, of the saint 
to whom our Lord hides his face and they feel as if they've been abandoned by him, Our Lady experienced this in a most real and profound way. She experienced it during these days when our Lord remained behind in Jerusalem. And she experienced it yet more, those days of our Lord's death and his hiding in the world of the dead. But Our Lady knew, she knew in faith that this separation would bring great fruit in the lives of others, just as we must know in the time of darkness that our Lord is giving graces to others to, to the degree that we continue to search for him, to the degree that we continue to chase him and long for his presence in our souls. And so that moment when Our Lady finally sees him, she sees him in the midst of the doctors and she sees some of them hanging on our Lord's every word. There are those sinful men who have already grown to despise our Lord's wisdom, but Our Lady delights in those loving Jews, those true men of Israel, who take delight in our Lord's words. Indeed, this must be the way we bear with all our trials in life, knowing that graces are given to others, that others are being led to Jesus, even through and because of our sufferings. Again, Origen adds, He is not found as soon as he was sought for, for Jesus was not among his kinsfolk and relations, among those who were joined to him according to the flesh, nor was he in the company of the multitude. Learn where those who seek him find him, not everywhere, but in the temple. And so you likewise, Seek Jesus in the temple of God, seek him in the church, and seek him among the masters who are in the temple. They did not find him among his kinsfolk, for human relations cannot comprehend the Son of God, nor among his acquaintances, for he passes far beyond all human knowledge and understanding. Where then do they find him? In the temple. If at any time you seek the Son of God, Seek him first in the temple, go there, and truly shall you find Christ, the Word and the Wisdom of God. Yes, our Lord is in our temples. He's enclosed in the tabernacle, and we can find him. We can be taught by him from the tabernacle. Let us do so frequently. Let us go to him with all our concerns, all our cares. There we will find true relief. There we will find hope. There we will find guidance and instruction. Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich adds, Jesus had been teaching two hours when Joseph and Mary entered the temple. They inquired after their child of the Levites whom they knew and received the answer that he was with the doctors in the lecture hall. But as they were not at liberty to enter the hall, they sent one of the Levites in to call Jesus. Jesus sent them word that he must first finish what he was doing. Mary was very much troubled at his not obeying at once, for this was the first time he had given his parents to understand that he had other commands than theirs to fulfill. Joseph was quite awed and astonished, but he kept a humble silence. The boy Jesus continued to teach for another hour, and then he left the hall, here he met his parents in the porch of Israel, the women's porch. His hearers were left confounded, confused, and some enraged. Mary, however, drawing near to her son, said, Child, why have you done this to us? Behold, your father and I have sought you sorrowing. But Jesus answered gravely, why have you sought me? Do you not know that I must be about my father's business? But they did not understand. They at once began with him their journey home. This mystery is not, however, one of the sorrowful. We think of the finding of the boy Jesus, the moment that Our Lady is reunited with him, the finding not just by Jesus and Mary, but the finding by the true Jews, the ones who had longed for the Messiah all their lives, the one who had so many questions, so many questions about the law, about the scriptures, 
Our Lord had given them answers and many were able to die at peace because of what our Lord had said on those days of teaching. Such is the joy that we should have on all people entering into the Catholic Church, of all people abandoning false religions and finding our Lord, the one who can answer all of their questions and provide meaning to their lives. Let us rejoice with Holy Mother Church at all those who have entered into the true religion this Easter. And let us desire that more people will find him. Almighty God, Lord Jesus Christ, accept my sufferings, my spiritual darkness, my feeling of aridity as a means to the conversion of others, that they may be drawn to you through my sufferings, as Our Lady's sufferings enabled the true Israelites to find the Messiah that they longed for. Blessed Mother Mary, Our Lady of Fatima, pray for me. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.